Hey everybody, we're going to go ahead and do a video about the USP40 and really the general USP design. I've had um, pretty much all the calibers in the USP line, at least the full size. Um, I've had uh, one of the compacts, I've had the 9mm, now the 40, uh, I've had the 45, <clears throat> and uh, I, I'm actually more happy with the 40 than any other. Uh, caliber as uh, ridiculous as that seems and I'll go ahead and explain uh, throughout but I'll try to keep it brief so anyways to start <clears throat> the USP originally was designed to handle the 40 caliber cartridge uh, they were kind of following the uh, from what I understand they were basically branching out from their SOCOM contract where they were designing the Mark 23 now with if you look at modern uh, experience that HK has had with pistols and such uh, and with the technology they have I don't think that uh, if they were asked to build the same thing I'm pretty sure it would look uh, very similar to the USP but probably something with uh, I, they could probably still fit in the same capacity uh, but I, I think they could actually fit in 12 rounds without or more <clears throat> without really compromising the size of the grip. However, uh, that out of the way, they wanted to branch out and actually satisfy law enforcement. Now they did look at trends. There was a lot of research that they put into this uh, because they obviously a gun company that's going to be importing and catering to a certain clientele. They're going to try to uh, make it uh, suitable for as many people as possible. So there, there's a total of like seven variants. Uh, for these pistols and the USP is incredibly versatile. It's my favorite um, but it started out as being <coughs> uh, Designed around the 40 caliber because that's what a lot of companies had problems with it was designing a very durable pistol uh, and very uh, service-friendly pistol that was uh, Gonna handle the 40 caliber cartridge because it is pretty uh, high pressure, but that was the round uh, that law enforcement wanted. But having a pistol that was reliable and durable was kind of questionable. So when HK came up with the 40 caliber design, they've continued to test it. And uh, what you'd see if you look at the armor's manual, which you can actually download off the internet, I think somebody has it posted on an old forum. Uh, <clears throat> but basically, from their testing, they're looking at about uh, 30,000 rounds before any of the major components need to really be changed and it's re it's basically going to have the same recoil across the board no matter what load you put in it from my experience um, but basically that's how it was designed to be so uh, with that said I, they designed this thing to uh, function basically around the recoil reduction system which is kind of interesting but I want to go ahead and uh, break down the pistol and kind of explain how this system works because it's a lot different from the others that use a nylon buffer nowadays um, not sure why but this system is actually proved to be much more durable than uh, the ones that use a nylon buffer in a flat spring so let me go ahead and break this down and I'll get back with you Okay, now as you can see, this is broken down into its basic components uh, for field stripping, magazine frame, uh, slide stop, and also the uh, cam pin. Uh, you've got the recoil reduction system. This is basically the whole system, barrel, slide. So, we're going to start with the recoil reduction system, which is basically the center of the pistol. So, <clears throat> what you have here is a double spring system, very unique though, because it's also the little... Uh, uh, basically the locking block or uh, whatever you want to call it for the barrel as you can see here the wear patterns actually illustrate that pretty well and also you can see this little track here uh, on most of the other pistols like P2000, P30 it's just a little slot where the pin isn't going to move at all but you can see that there's uh, plenty of extra room here where it actually moves a bit <clears throat> as, and you can also see a little bit of wear on the front of this that's uh, and on the direct uh, top which would actually be right here so this part actually rubs on here but it's just a narrow area so that gets a little bit of wear and then it slams right here which would be right in this area where you can see that wear so that's basically how it works and then um, <clears throat> basically with this whole system it fits in the frame here, and this is basically designed, I know I'm saying basically because it is basic, but uh, anyways, 
uh, this is designed to uh, keep the frame from getting battered a lot. And so what you have here is a spring system. This spring is going to be weaker than this uh, one back here. This one is incredibly strong. But basically, as I keep on saying, when this comes down, it gets stopped by the big spring. And so it never makes contact with the actual <coughs> uh, frame itself. Now, when it's working around uh, this little cam pin, when it slides back and forth, this piece actually does reciprocate because when it's pushing, watch this little piece right here and how it separates. So it actually starts right there instead of this thing being pushed back. So, so this piece actually gets pushed back, but this is not the part that starts the compression. It's actually from here. So this can only reach about here, and that cam pin actually will prevent its movement. Let me go ahead and get this aligned here. Uh, actually, this would probably be the better demonstration right here. My apologies. <clears throat> so basically, the rearward most movement that this can be allowed is going to be about there. So you can see with this aligned, it would never actually make contact with this part right here. It would actually just move right back to there. And the funny thing about this is when it's at its compressed stage, it's never going to really get fully compressed. That's It's not going to be able to move that distance uh, enough. It would only be able to move uh, about that much. And this is like two times longer than this. So it's never going to fully compress. So you never have to worry about uh, sympathetic hitting on the, on the frame or something like that. So... This is a very interesting system. Now, most other double recoil springs, what they're doing is they have an initial spring to, uh, for timing and basically putting it back in the battery, and the other one continues to slow it down. So it's kind of like a variable uh, one. And then, of course, you have the, the flat recoil springs, which are basically to give a constant tension all the way. No one's really wrong here, but this system actually preserves the frame, prevents shock to the other components, uh, pretty well and the the only downside of the USP design is you will see more muzzle flip now is that a real downside no but that's a downside a lot of people report because they don't like seeing the muzzle flip I guess which is absolutely ridiculous to me I, I don't really care if the thing flips 360 degrees in my hand as long as it goes back on target and it's not beating the hell out of my hand when I'm shooting it okay I, so what I say to a lot of people who complain about that is I say grow up so anyways, <clears throat> uh, these things will last about uh, 20 to 30,000 rounds, uh, depending. Now, if you're really savvy, you can, you know, pop out this little retaining clip right here, take this piece off, take this spring off, and then punch out this piece right here and replace this big-ass spring, and you can extend the life of it. However, th this wear right here, you could start getting pitting and stuff like this, so it, it's an all-in-one basically it's centered around that now let me go ahead and move on to the barrel so oh and before I do that kind of part of the recoil reduction system this thing does not really have any reports of failing and this is designed to be a slide release and most of the time today just use your slide release it's not really going to be a big deal if you're worried about muscle memory and stuff like that um, you're usually a beginner and you're not really you know, train all that much. So sure, I could understand you trying to rack the slide, but this is a simpler method if you have a slide lock. And I've never seen anybody forget to rack the slide if it does fail to uh, lock back. But anyways, okay, uh, let's move on to the barrel. Now the barrel is the only modification that I actually know of where the generations upgraded because they had standard rifling. Now they have uh, polygonal rifling, which has been around for a long time. They weren't really the first to do it in a pistol or anything like that. Uh, so this is actually a pretty nice barrel and uh, this is NATO tested. Uh, that's basically what they did with the USPs. They wanted to make sure their pistols were as strong as possible because they were looking for government contracts and stuff like that and they love to blow it out of the water, you know. So they basically did a uh, kind of a squib load test where basically they get a bullet and <clears throat> uh, basically right up to the uh, bullet that would be in the chamber and shot it. Uh, they didn't. <laughs> okay, so they didn't really have that many issues. Uh, they had a little bit of bulging, I believe, 
uh, but it wasn't enough to actually prevent the slide from, uh, you know, fully uh, cycling. And the barrel had a bullet stuck here, and yeah, bulge it, but it passed the test, and that's actually pretty awesome. These are very strong barrels. They will last a long time. Now, it, here's the other thing. Uh, the slide. <clears throat> the slide is pretty beefy. It's actually uh, kind of robust. If you get the 9mm version, this area is going to be pretty well cut out. They need to lighten the slide a bit because 9mm is kind of pooky to 40 caliber and you want weight. You want to have something heavy that the 40 caliber has to push back to give it a job, right? And then, of course, you have the spring. This is a pretty light spring, so when you're racking this pistol, this is a pretty light spring right here. And this is more to get into battery, and uh, they're not really too worried. Most of the uh, uh, function on the recoil is going to be this one, and this stops the slide. And the funny thing is that... This actually causes a bouncing effect. So even, I believe even if this spring was wearing out, when this thing is fully compressed, it's pushing against the slide. It's resisting the slide's rearward movement. And with how strong the spring is, it's going to, when it's uh, basically done pushing back, this is going to bounce it like a, like a trampoline. So you shouldn't really have too many issues of things going in the battery. And I really actually haven't. I've just had that one issue that I uh, showed on video with the extractor, um, a failure uh, to extract uh, that one time. And this is a pretty worn gun. Uh, I can feel this spring is pretty worn, but it's been, you know, reliable except that one round. And uh, <clears throat> I've had uh, reliability issues with some other USPs like uh, the 9mm and even the 45. 45 was a little hinky. I don't think the recoil spring was really up to par, but you know, that is what it is. But this slide, uh, kind of beefy. Uh, the individual components, it's not going to be really that easy to change out. It, of course, it's got a firing pin block in it. The chamber is going to be very durable. One of the weaknesses of Glocks is actually the breech face. This breech face is actually pretty thick, very nice. And the uh, uh, the slide doesn't really have too much contact with the frame as uh, most people know you got just these little nubs and they don't really need it to uh, because it's not really transferring that much shock it's letting the slide do what it wants to do but these are metal contact points and i don't know of any reports where these actually have worn down and become an issue so the next thing we're going to talk about is the frame so the frame is made out of a glass uh, filled polymer it's actually pretty thick pretty durable um, a little thicker than it needs to be yeah probably you could probably grind this out and every little bit counts so if you wanted to grind out these little uh, uh, pyramids right here you could probably uh, get this thing down to be a little slimmer but you don't want to go so slim to where you Obviously, you're exposing, you know, the hammer spring here, and of course, they're trying to lighten it up a little bit, but it is reinforced with uh, steel. If you actually look into this hole right here, you can actually see the steel right there, the stainless steel that they have there to reinforce this point, because metal frame guns will actually crack at that point, but uh, this kind of strengthens the polymer, so you're not going to get it basically cr uh, crimping up. In this area so it's it's only reinforced really in the areas that it needs to be uh, so if you were to look at an x-ray it's only really going to go from here to here uh, so just enough to kind of absorb it and you can kind of see that uh, when this thing is back all the way it doesn't go very far back and this is of course a, a little track or whatever for this area I, I think it's more for debris to get out but you can see a little metal here that's not really an issue or a manufactured defect but of course you have lightning uh, uh, lightning points right here where it lightens up and you have the metal tracks in here where the recoil reduction system slides in very securely it is very well fit very tightly fit so it doesn't really have all that much movement when it's at the very rear so you don't have to worry about that uh, wearing down too much so this is a lot of material to cover but I think it's pretty necessary the cool thing about this frame is I've always been able to really just put uh, install and uninstall this stuff with uh, one punch really I haven't uh, I used if you uh, know the MMP, the little uh, punch that comes out of the uh, bottom of the magazine well, 
Uh, I actually just use that. I have a couple of spares that I got from Smith & Wesson when I uh, didn't have one in the gun when I ordered it because it was a used gun. Uh, so <clears throat> I, or I lost one another time, so I have a couple of those punches around. So I just use that to disassemble this whole thing, and that's all you need. It's actually very easy to disassemble. The only thing is, is actually the sear spring, which is uh, right down there, which provides uh, tension to the sear here and this little piece and so it, it gives it its tension now that can actually be replaced with a nickel coated spring from hkparts.net uh, and it'll lighten up the uh, trigger pull a bit uh, at least the uh, single action for the most part however with the hammer spring you can actually get a lightened one as well and i haven't had any durability issues or anything like that with mine uh, but unless you're going to be uh, doing a lot of uh, shooting with this, you're probably going to want to just, if, if you have it stock, you can leave it cocked a little bit and it can kind of mess with the spring tension and lower it a little bit. Or you can just mess with it, dry fire it, you know, whatever, just try to use it, if you will. So uh, anyways, everything's pretty robust. It actually is all coated, but it seems like they're using a different metal because it's the same coating, but... It's not all the same as far as the outcome is concerned. Even if you look at the extractor here, they're using different metals because different metals will take a finish differently. Uh, even like a nitride coating, which is basically what they use. They just try to use like all these fancy terms in their marketing, which is kind of ridiculous. And they didn't want to disclose to me uh, what kind of metals they were using or even the series that they were using. Uh, because they could have just kept it, uh, you know, kind of vague, like a 400 series carbon steel or something like that, or uh, some other uh, stainless steel, like a seven, uh, like if they were to use aluminum, like a 7,000 series or a 6,000 series, like uh, Streamlight lights, they use a 6,000 series aluminum, uh, so aluminum alloy. So, anyways. So we covered that. The next thing I want to talk about is magazines. This is actually a point of contention for a lot of people because they're kind of upset. This actually does have metal reinforcements. You can actually see it uh, somewhat in the feed lips uh, right at the top here. It does reinforce the feed lips. The feed lips are actually not really all that you know great. Uh, they can be bent. It would not be too hard. So if you're one of those uh, people who actually think uh, like on when I had the malfunction when I just pulled it out you can rip out a cartridge and that actually can fuck up your magazines uh not only in this pistol but in every pistol i've seen it happen plenty of times just lock back the goddamn slide and then take out the magazine don't fuck with it so <clears throat> that's my recommendation that's what i've seen happen so even on 1911s especially on 1911s or mps anything that has a metal magazine you're gonna fuck it up so these metal reinforcements typically with polymer it's not gonna fuck it up as bad but you can actually see where it's not grabbing it all that well anymore. Uh, there's a little bit of spacing right there. So it's basically holding on to it just in the rear. So you might have to worry about that a little bit. You might have to get a new magazine body. And you can get individual springs and magazine bodies without the base plates and stuff like that from hkparts.net. And that will save you a lot of money, I'm telling you. So anyways, uh, this is obviously a restricted one, but there is metal reinforcement in these magazines and it goes down to about a third of the way or uh, something like that. So about to here, there is metal reinforcement and uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not like the clocks where it goes all the way down, so it does save on space. But the problem is that the lockup is Palmer, and there isn't any reinforcements here. So what you're stuck with is a magazine release like this one. It's kind of tiny, kind of pooky. If you get uh, like a compact uh, P2000, anything that uses the metal mags. You can get an extender on it, not the, really the VP9 or the HK45, but you're basically taking the HK45 and instead of being a polymer um, little latch, uh, it would be metal. So that's no bueno to actually use metal against polymer, especially if you're loading this thing up to capacity, which is actually 14 rounds. And if you want to sit here and see it, well, I'll go ahead. So one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it can actually hold 14 rounds. It's not really that big of a deal. And here's the other thing about the USP. When the whole thing is put together, 
um, you're only looking at 5.3 inches, which is actually very good for the size of it because a Glock is 5.3, and it may not sound like a lot, but it actually does make quite a difference uh, in your capacity, and even though this has got a fat slide and everything, it is very efficient in the amount of rounds you're getting. So you got to kind of judge it on that. If it's getting a lower capacity, generally HK has a reason for it because of their research showing uh, reliability. You don't want to cram that many rounds in or they're trying to make a thinner magazine to give you a better grip. There's no free lunch. you got to make sacrifices, right? So anyway, this pistol has not really seen any updates or whatever. Um, <clears throat> they haven't really updated it with uh, different generations like Glocks or whatever, but that's because all they would rather do is just come out with new pistols, which basically are sympathetically the new generations. But like a lot of people like the Gen 1 and 2s of the Glocks, uh, people still appreciate the old school USP, and I'm a big fan of it. However, I wish they would actually upgrade the rail because I think a lot more people would be interested in this if they would upgrade the rail and maybe the frame just change their tooling a little bit. But anyways, this is really not that bad. The 9mm and the 40 grips are not that bad. They did do research on how these things are. It's a little bit lightened up here. It's a little bit slimmer around this area, which you can probably see that, how it's indented. It goes in a little bit, so it does give you hope to kind of narrow this down a little bit if you're really petty about that crap but um you can round this out a little bit or grind it down uh you got to be really careful of course and that can uh, go a long way like if you're wearing gloves i still don't really have a problem and i've got pretty small girly hands and a lot of people will test the trigger pull by this where the hammer is all the way forward well that's bullshit because if you have a loaded round it's actually going to be to here so this is actually your start trigger pull so yeah, you gotta judge it from there. And also the trigger pull weight starts not from not from the full part, but from here. So the trigger pull is gonna be way different. So anyways, they haven't really done that many uh, updates on it. It's known to be a pretty reliable system just on the way things are built. They're built like tanks. Uh, they get the, they got the feed ramp right. You know, it's nice and polished. That's just HK for you. They um, make sure that their stuff does pretty well, except for the VP9 and, you know, a lot of the civilian pistols. Those things are pieces of junk in my opinion, and I think it was unnecessary, a lot of their uh, crap. Uh, the USP is still the pinnacle of uh, perfection for the HK. Um, uh, HK line as far as uh, what you really want ultimately out of a pistol which is reliability and durability because when the time comes you need to make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to do in the time when the time comes because it can go bang but will it actually uh, cycle so yeah it'll go bang every time as long as you you know slap the back or whatever on a lot of other pistols or whatever but this one will last a lot longer than most other pistols uh, and I don't know of any design that is really that good. So you can update these things. It's not always the uh, least expensive like Glocks or whatever, but uh, again, it'll last you a long time and tens of thousands of rounds. So anyways, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about the USP design. And I know this is going to be, you know, like a 25 minute video, but uh, I hope that you guys learned something because there's a lot of uh, interesting details that make this a very good pistol. And I'm telling you, shooting 40 caliber out of this, it is insensitive. Um, and it's actually quite amazing. It's on par with the PX4 Storm, which is the lightest uh, recoiling 40 caliber I've ever tested. Um, so, yeah, it's actually pretty sweet. But anyways... Um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I, I hope you'll uh, take a look at the USB design and not crap on it too much for just being, you know, a little bit older. But, you know, I think it's well worth the money uh, if you're going to get a USP that is a police trade-in. I would not pay $800 uh, for this unless it's going to be the only gun you're going to use. And if... Uh, it, I wouldn't pay $800, let me correct that. I wouldn't pay $800 if you're the kind of person who goes to the range once a year and puts 20 rounds through it. I doesn't even finish the whole box of ammo and you still leave ammo left in the box when you leave the range. You're not the kind of person that should be using this gun. You should be using this gun because you need something that's actually going to match the amount of training and uh, 
usage that you actually have for it. I know that makes me sound like an ass, but uh, just cater your purchases to what you're actually going to do. Uh, if you're not a serious shooter, then just get a Taurus or something that'll malfunction on you uh, every 100 rounds because you'll never end up reaching 100 rounds if you're a pookie shooter uh, and if you're just a range boy. But anyways, uh, thanks a lot for watching, uh, and I hope you learned something. You guys have a good one.